All right, good morning, Wasteland. Mr. G coming to you live from the Mr. G garage, both literal and cross out. And we're continuing the series of ranking all the parts in the game. We did cabins, we did weapons, and I say we because I had help. And we did movement parts. Uh, I really, I sent out lots more requests for input on movement parts, aggregated data from about 20 of the most experienced players I know on the Discord, double checked it with you guys, the masses on the Discord. You're like, hey, I want in on that. Uh, link down in the description. Uh, check that out down below if you want to be part of one of the biggest crossout communities on Discord, if not the biggest crossout community on Discord. Yeah, we got more active members than the official Discord for crossout. Yeah, come join us. Check us out. Uh, always something to do on there. But today, we're going to rank movement parts all the way from F, D, C, B, A, all the way up to S tier movement parts. Let's waste no more of your time. Let's start with our F rated parts. Now, before we get into this, we rated these parts all together and ranked them on the same scale. That means whites were ranked right alongside epics. So you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Um, that doesn't mean that if something's a D, hey, it makes sense for a new player build. You know, just take that with a little bit of a disclaimer. All right, let's get to it. Obviously, our first F rated wheel, sorry, not D, F rated is going to be the starter wheel because this is even below white. It's common, it's got the least hit points, tonnage, worst stats of any wheel in the game. Nothing else to say there. Obviously following that we got the small wheel which is super bad stats, white and not great. It's our last F rated wheel on to D's. A lot of people argue that the balloon tire should be at least C. Ah, oh, just you see so few people use it. Its stats are okay. Back before they changed the game, different wheels actually had different traction on different surfaces, which meant that this wheel actually kind of served a purpose, like going through water, etc. But anymore, its purpose is pretty much null and void as it doesn't provide any traction bonuses, as those bonuses are now determined by rarity. So whites being the worst, followed by blues, epics, on and on and upward. Bit of a bummer that was removed in my opinion. Let me know what you think about that in the comments on the C-rated wheels. All right, guys, we're giving the medium wheel a C rating as it's the best white wheel there is. It has the most tonnage and hit points of any of the white or the common wheels. It's a good choice. Moving on, we're going to cover blues, specials, and epics. are going to fill out the rest of C, B, A, and S tiers. All right, coming in at uh, C tier studded wheel. doesn't take away a lot of power. It only reduces power by 5%. Tonnage isn't great, but it's really tiny. If you need to stick a small wheel at the front of a wedge, this is your wheel. Uh, the chained wheel, it's pretty small as well. It takes a little bit more power away than the stutter wheel. It's a little bit larger. If you're curious about wheel sizes, I did a separate video about all the wheel sizes and how they compare to each other. It's a little dated, but only missing a few wheels, so still worth checking out if you're just really curious about wheel sizes. On to the next one. The gun mount wheel coming in at C. Uh, this was a Knight Rider wheel that they dropped because, look, it's kind of knight-themed. Um, this thing takes away... Uh, 8%, but it has a special feature, which is kind of cool. It's got a little bit of pass-through because it's kind of hollow and metal. So some bullets and shells, kind of like a grill piece, will pass through it, being really the only benefit of using this wheel is it has that pass-through. Last in the C category is the landing gear. It's just, the tonnage isn't great. It's okay. It doesn't take away a lot of power, which is its only bonus. But most of the time, there's going to be a better wheel for the job than the landing gear. However, sometimes... You might need the landing gear just depending on size. On to our better wheels, let's hit B category. The large wheel comes in at a B plus. Nearly gave this thing an A rating, but since they've added new wheels to the game, there are better wheels now. Back when I first started playing cross out, this was the only wheel to use. It was the best wheel, the biggest, the most tonnage. Um, you'll notice though, it has good tonnage at 1650, uh, but it does take away power at 10% power reduction uh, using a large wheel. Lunar wheel also coming in at a B category, only taking away 5% of your energy. Not a lot for tonnage, but you will notice just like the gun mount wheel, it's got pass through for bullets. So a lot of those bullets are going to pass through a little bit like a frame or a grill piece. You can see even by the way it's designed. Also looks cool if you're making goofy art themed builds. All right, we've only got a couple epics coming in at B and one of those is going to be the hardened track. Um, these things sure look cool, and you can make some really futuristic-looking tanks with them, but their speed isn't great. For a track, their tonnage is pretty low. Max speed, 
75 kilometers per hour. You will notice that it has resistance to melee, resistance to bullet damage, and resistance to thermal damage, which is one of the bigger bonuses of tracks. They've also improved the mechanics for how tracks turn and drive. Um, and uh, they've got really good grip. You're not going to get stuck. So it's okay, but there are better tracks, trust me. The armor track definitely used to be A tier just because you could use this thing as a shield on the side of your build. It's going to give you hefty power reduction of 40%, but it's going to have resistance to bullet damage, blast damage, uh, and melee damage as well as thermal damage. So it's going to be a solid shield on the side of your rig, but you're only going to be able to go a max speed of 60 kilometers per hour on to our A tier movement parts. Our first A tier movement part is the Stallion, simply for the fact that it's tiny, it's narrow, you can fit it in a lot of cool places, and it's only going to give you a power reduction of 8%, but also, it's got a hydraulics that lift it up and down. I do not know why Targem has not given us any more of these, maybe it was really hard to code, but an extremely cool function, great for some certain wedges and getting underneath vehicles, or making the perfect low rider, and it's got white wall tires. Who doesn't love that next up we've got the racing wheel it's got good tonnage it's got a little power reduction and it's a great size for building it's a good all-rounder for your speedy builds okay here we go with our first of the special category well actually second we've already covered a couple of those earlier we talked about the lunar we've got the shiv wheel uh it's good size it's got some resistances as well it's got resistance to melee but it also does melee damage really good wheel Next up, we're talking about the Array, which is a medium wheel. It's got a lot of tonnage. It's got really good durability, and it looks cool on military-styled vehicles. Only gives you an 8% power reduction. It's a solid, special category medium wheel. Uh, next up, one of our only wheels that's going to have a resistance um, is going to be resistance to blast damage coming from the APC wheel. A nice feature to see on a military-themed wheel. It's cool looking. It's got good tonnage, and it's got good durability. You're not going to go wrong with an APC wheel. Ah, uh, twin wheels. I remember when I first got dualies when I first started out the game. Excellent wheel. Good durability. Good tonnage. They look cool. Put them on the back end of your build. They look really, really good. Uh, they do have a power reduction to 10%, but a solid A-tier movement part. Okay, the rest of the A's we're going to cover are going to be epics. And in fact, the rest of the S's we're going to cover are going to be epics. Guess what? Epic parts tend to be better, especially in movement parts where we don't have legendary or relic categories. We're going to start with the Hermit Wheel, where if you go over 70 kilometers an hour, it gets a resistance up to 70% at 90 kilometers an hour. It's got good tonnage. It's 1,700 kilograms, only reducing your power by 6%, and a durability of 310, and that damage resistance can't be overstated. You can see it's one of our only Ravager-themed movement parts. This is the biggest movement part in the game. It's a World War I Goliath track, and you can mount stuff to the outside of it. The only one that has weld points on the outside, which makes for a lot of interesting builds and sandwiches you can do. Put a bastion between two of these, sandwich some goblins under it, and you've got yourself a really protected build because this thing has tonnage of 6,000, 1,600 points of durability, and it has damage resistance to bullet, 50% to melee, 25% to thermal. You don't want to be a doggo and slam into the side of one of these because it'll take you all day to chew through it. Now the Icarus 4 is a hover we're going to be talking about and it's one of the first hovers we're going to put in here and it's not S tier because of a reason. Well, when they first introduced the 4s, these are the red looking hovers. They had uh, they have a little bit more durability than their counterparts, uh, the 7s. But one of the problems that these have is they have lower speed. They don't react as quick as the sevens and on hovers speed is life it means a lot more than just durability I'm gonna give you a power reduction of eight percent and they only have a durability of 160 making them an a class instead of an s class movement part next up big rooms are they legs or are they wheels no they're both um, they speed up aiming time by 50% depending on the share of big room among the vehicle's chassis. So they make your reticles dial down a little bit quicker. They can also go in between leg mode and big room mode, which is cool. And they've got a resistance to melee damage, which is a nice feature. Not going to lie, I still prefer standard legs most of the time. I don't know. Maybe I'm just biased. Now, meat grinders nearly came into the B category, and they're probably one that oh, it's tough. Uh, they could be better, and they've been buffed over time, but they still don't perform 
as good as some of the other interesting movement parts. Um, you can move sideways and they deal their own melee damage, which is cool. The turning isn't as good as on legs. Uh, you can make some cool builds with these though. They're solid and you can get really creative. People even undermount these to keep doggos from chewing up their leg builds. They're really versatile and interesting piece to use. Are there better movement parts? Yes. Ah, uh, the ML200. I remember the first time I bought the Step Spider pack and was just blown away by how the game totally changed and I could make cool, leggy spider builds. It's a beefy, beefy movement part. Um, it's gonna give you resistance to melee. Um, does have a 20% power reduction, but the tonnage on these is good and the hit points is solid, especially put quite a few of them together. And they reduce weapon recoil and increase incoming impulse resistance by 20%. You're not gonna get knocked over in these bad boys. They make for stable shooting platforms, whether it's a big auto cannon or a cannon, putting stuff on legs can be a good move. And you can strafe with them, turn, back up, you just gotta master it. On to the few, the proud, the S-tier movement parts. The Bigfoot is bar none the best wheel in the game. It's the biggest, it's a monster truck wheel and increase uh, your modules will kick over faster when you're moving with these bad boys. You're gonna want a few of them though. If you're gonna start making big builds, you can't get away with just two. You need between four and eight of these depending on whatever you're building. They give you a power reduction at 10%. They got a durability of 445 and they just look really good. Solid looking wheel, biggest wheel in the game. Targem, give us more big epic wheels, please, please, give us more. Small track, after they fixed the way tracks move and function in the game, these are some of the fastest, quickest tracks in the game, especially when you pair them with the right engine. Uh, they still have resistance to bullet damage, melee, and thermal, and these things are fast. You can go 90 miles, sorry, kilometers per hour. Uh, with these bad boys and they're easy to build around and fit on small to medium to even big builds and last but not least the controversial hover the icarus 7 this one coming in at s tier because it only has a power reduction of five percent unlike the icarus 4 which makes it significantly quicker it really does and that means everything when you're on hover you got to shoot scoot and be fast because speed is armor I know a lot of people in the game say ever since they released hovers, the game hasn't been the same. That's another video. Talk about that. I'm just here to say, are they one of the best movement parts in the game? Absolutely. If you've never tried hover, but you can afford it, you're missing out on half the game without trying out hover because it just lets you do things that no other part is going to let you do. You can fly around sideways, backwards, shoot. Any direction you want to go, it'll get there instantly. There's no really overcoming inertia very much with these although if you put a big really wide space build you get that centrifugal inertia which can really slow you down you guys let me know what you think about this list in the comments if you disagree with something please blow up the comments and tell me why and next up we're going to cover modules so make sure to like and subscribe and go by the channel i got a whole playlist of guides if you're a new player some of them are a bit dated but everything in there still holds up whether it's the build guides etc it's all good i'm gonna catch you guys later be good mr g out.